continuing the terribleness, please welcome Mike. Hello, everyone. How's everyone going? That was just my excuse to get this stool. Uh, so I was on holiday last year um, in Spain with my, my wonderful wife over there, Sunny. Um, and there was this massive storm off in the distance. And I stood on the balcony and thought to myself, man, that storm is fucking sexy. So as the storm gradually approached our apartment, I sat near the window while she made us dinner. And, uh, and I wrote what I can only describe as a weather-based eroticum. Um, if it ends a little abruptly, it's only because dinner was ready. And I apologize for slapping you with audience participation right off the bat, but it is mandatory. <laughs> Johnny Hard Drive woke up in a cold sweat, just as his clock ticked over to 2am. Johnny was a small boy of just seven years old once, but now he was an enormous grown man with even more enormous arms that made everybody say, wow, those were enormous arms. <laughs> Every time he walked into a room, it sounded like this. Wow. Woo! Oh, that's oh, wow, look at that. Thank you very much. Johnny looked out the window of his seaside farmyard bar bungalow in Bermuda and saw it. Off in the distance at first, just a little flicker of activity, blink and you'd miss it. A little flash of distant lightning, or, or maybe it was just a camera? But soon enough it came closer, bearing down on him with the determination of an angry buffalo. It started tussling even the larger branches of his favourite palm tree. He could see its might as it approached, picking up distant boats and smashing them into the ocean. Dogs barked, parrots squawked, and vultures crowed deeply with anticipation. At that moment, Johnny Hard Drive knew he was going to get fucked by that storm. <laughs> Johnny watched and waited as the lightning grew nearer, gruffly counting under his breath the seconds between the lightning and thunder to measure its distance and anticipate its arrival. He had done all he could to prepare, boarding up the windows, burying the tractor, tying down the pigs and tickling the lucky spider. He could feel his breath quickening as the storm grew nearer. He looked up to see his windsock completely erect, held up by both the literal and spiritual weight of the storm that he knew would soon be on top of him. And all of a sudden it came. <laughs> As soon as the first gust hit him, he knew it would be worse than he'd prepared for. This one was going to be harder and wetter than he'd ever seen. And then he saw it, off in the distance. One of the pigs had gotten loose and found itself on the edge of the cliff, grip, gripping on by its little pig claws to the slippery rock as waves lapped at its hungry feet. I don't know what that means. Johnny felt something swelling up inside him. A moment of introspection told him it wasn't his usual horniness. After all, he was already rock solid before spotting the pig. This time, the emotion was compassion. Johnny had never felt like such a multi-dimensional character, and he was thrilled at the opportunity to share both of his wonderful dimensions with the world. Johnny practically dived out his front door before he'd even made it off the porch. He was blinded as a bolt of lightning shattered his favorite tree. So we're going to play it that way, are we? He said, though the storm showed no signs of listening. He ran across the beach as the wave lapped at his feet and the lightning shattered one palm tree after another like the ending of the movie 1917 with all the explosions. As he neared, he gained a better view of the situation. At the end of a narrow, rocky outcrop being lashed by the wind and waves was his prized sow Esmeralda. And Johnny was almost there, just the treacherous walk along Dead Man's Trail, a narrow series of rocks with a sheer thousand foot fall on either side. And it required a jump so lengthy it seemed to go on forever, and so girthy too, the failure of which could plunge him to immediate death, dashed onto the rocks to be never heard from again. No problem, he'd done it a thousand times before. During the day, Johnny surveyed the trail, preparing for what was laid out before him, the storm spitting in his face. He thought he saw it turn its concentration to some other part of the cliff for the moment and took his chance. With all of the grace Johnny could remember from his high school floor gymnastics classes, he jumped. He soared across, and just as he thought something was finally going right for him, the storm showed him who was boss. A gale force wind with a fresh sheet of rain hit him, and what looked like a surefire success became yet another battle with destiny all in a day's work for the strapping young bad boy, Johnny Hard Drive. He watched as his feet fell past the rock that he had been so close to landing on. He hit it with his chest, feeling a hard, disorienting thud through his body, followed by his inevitable, pathetic scramble of trying to find purchase with his hands before he would slip down to his warm, wet mistress below. Not just below, all around him. He was inside the powerful, wet storm, and he loved it. The storm pushed him down until he was holding on by just his fingertips. It spat in his face to show him just to, just to show him it could. And just as Johnny thought he had no choice but to let go, it loosened its grasp on him. The rain was gone and the air was still as Johnny pulled himself up on the ledge and rolled over onto his back, looking up at the storm. This wasn't the end and he knew it. He looked it in the eye and begged for mercy. And then it hit him again. 
And then he got the pig and got all the way home and was fine, thanks. 